Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for November 3rd, 2010, and now the news. If automakers want to survive, they've got to team up with another car company, right? That seems to be the logic in today's automotive industry, but tiny Aston Martin says, not us. It is going to remain independent. Aston Martin, I salute you. I love to see a car company have the guts to go it alone. Company CEO Ulrich Betts says the company has been profitable since 2004 and sees no need to tie up with another automaker, Bloomberg reports. The Ford Motor Company owned Aston from 1994 to 2007, and amazingly, Aston has only built 55,000 cars since it started building them in 1913. General Motors just got an amazing windfall. Thanks to massive financial losses in years past, it can use what's called tax loss carry forwards to avoid paying income taxes for years. Specifically, GM will not have to pay taxes on the next $45 billion in net profits that it reports. That means GM may not have to pay income taxes for nearly a decade. But here's an interesting side note. Those financial losses were racked up by the old GM, now known as Liquidation Motors. But the new GM will get the credits anyway because the IRS ruled last year that any company which received TARP funds can use those tax loss carry forwards. And yeah, ouch. I'll bet Rush Limbaugh and the conservative blogosphere will have a field day with that one. Nissan is getting set to roll out the LEAF next month, and it's advertising it as a zero emissions vehicle. But critics say, no it's not. That's because a lot of the electricity used to charge a LEAF comes from burning coal or from other polluting sources. Carlos Tavares, the chairman of Nissan's America, defends it from critics who call it a coal car. He points to several markets where it will be sold that generate electricity from renewable sources. But here's my bottom line. It's okay for Nissan to advertise the LEAF as a 100% electric car, but it's not okay to say it is a zero emissions vehicle because it's not. In a very telling move, Toyota has decided not to build the Prius in China. According to the China Car Times, The company canceled production because the Chinese government will not provide incentives for foreign badged vehicles, even if they are built in China. I think the rest of the world better sit up and take notice of these protectionist policies, especially when you tie that in with the cutback in exports of rare earth metals out of China. And speaking of politics, yesterday's midterm elections could have far reaching consequences for the auto industry. No sooner is the election over with a big setback for the Obama administration than automakers come out swinging hard. According to the Detroit News, GM, Ford, Chrysler, and Toyota are now saying the Obama administration significantly overstated the efficiency gains that are feasible by 2025. Remember, the target is 62 miles per gallon. The automakers say the lawmakers underestimated how much it will cost to meet that proposed mandate. The point the OEMs are hammering home is that if people want highly fuel efficient cars, why aren't they buying them now? Hybrids only account for about 2% of the American market. The SEMA show was underway in Las Vegas this week and as usual, there's a ton of interesting stuff to report on. Our friends at Autoblog are obsessively covering the event and here are some of the highlights. Toyota is showing off a super stretched version of its Sienna minivan called the Swagger Wagon Supreme. Inside, the metallic blue van is decked out with wood floors, cabinets, and all kinds of electronics. An outfit called Zero South has created an insane Hummer H1. Most noticeably, the truck is propped up on stilts, showing off its exposed chassis. Woohoo! Take it all off! It runs on biodiesel and features four electrically powered treads instead of wheels. The General showed off four different flavors of Camaro in Sin City. The cars include a V6 appearance package, a showy V8 model dressed to the nines, a track ready concept called the SSX, and a special edition Synergy model. Lastly, Audi made its first SEMA appearance ever this year, revealing illuminated floor mats. 
The carpet covers are LED powered and will be available exclusively at Audi dealers. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It and I Said It. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. And now it's time for some of your feedback and what of my viewpoints. Jets Corp saw our report on one of Chinese automaker Geely's cars failing spectacularly in a frontal crash test. Good Lord, he writes, that crash test was ridiculous. The only question I have is, where did the engine go? It must have either crumpled up until it was four inches long or come sailing into the passenger compartment and bashed in the driver's legs, mafia style. <laughs> I love the way you guys describe things, mafia style. A number of you have complained that we don't provide full screen capability for our shows. We're working on it, but it represents a big cost for us. In the meantime, we were invited by YouTube to become a partner, and now you can watch our shows there with full screen. That prompted John to write in and say, thanks for listening. The screen size options will sure make it a lot more fun to look at images. Great work getting the alternative video location. I'll probably link there after each email arrives. Now I want to move from viewer mail to one of my viewpoints. A few weeks ago, we reported that the Detroit Economic Club uninvited Steve Ratner, the former head of the Automotive Task Force, to speak at one of their meetings. You heard my stand on that. I praised the Econ Club because Ratner violated ethics standards in a conflict of interest and violated the law with a million dollar bribe scheme. But today, the Automotive Press Association, also located in Detroit, said, it is delighted to invite Ratner to speak to its members. In fact, it says the Detroit Economic Club made a mistake on inviting Ratner. Well, let me tell you something. I'm a member of the Automotive Press Association, or I should say, I was. As of right now, I resign in protest over the APA inviting someone as a speaker who instead should be going to prison. You know, one of the reasons for a decline in ethics in modern society is that if the crooks are famous and can draw in a big crowd, we're too willing to look the other way. But that brings us to the end of today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>